how is romance an obstacle on the spiritual path, that couple relationship? Well, first of all, it doesn't have to be. In the, in the spiritual teachings, there is nothing that says you have to be a sannyasi, you have to be a monk, or you have to be a nun, or you have to be celibate. In fact, the scriptures are filled. Many, if not most, of the rishis, of the teachers, the guides in the scriptures, are actually not renunciants, but actually are householders. So it doesn't have to be an obstacle by any means. The issue is that regardless of which path we choose, we have to keep remembering that our ultimate goal is the same. The ultimate goal is to realize, not just intellectually in my mind, but actually in my experience, in the, the knowing of myself, my capital S self that who I am is divine. And whether we call it awakening or enlightenment or waking up or moksha or freedom or whatever term we use for it, that's the ultimate goal, is experiencing and knowing, really knowing that who you are at the core, that that highest truth is divinity, which therefore means it is oneness with the world, that there is no place you end and the world begins. Now, we also are here, of course, in physical bodies. And the physical bodies have had histories and experiences and different karmic packages. And that is also real. But it's important not to get stuck in that. Otherwise, we think that that's all we are. And so we become like actors playing a role, forgetting that we are actually the one who has agreed to wear the costume. And it's very important at the end of the day that actors, you know, they after the show, they take off the costume, they wash off the makeup, they go home. And they remember, I'm the actor, I'm the player of the role. And in, in the history of theater or movies, I've never once heard of an actor who played a villain, who actually went home and murdered his family because he forgot that he forgot that the villain was only a role and he, you know, over-identified with it and forgot to take it off when he went home and slaughtered his neighborhood. I've never heard of that, ever. When I mean, you think about how many commercials, TV shows, movies, theatrical productions happen all over the world. But every one of the actors and actresses remembers I'm just playing the role. And so for us, our highest goal is to remember, oh yeah, I'm just playing this. So I'm here playing a 48-year-old female renunciant. You're over there playing something else. She's playing something else. He's playing our beloved cameraman. Everybody's playing something different. And we need to, to play it well, sincerely. But we also have to remember there's this whole other reality behind the mask, behind the role. This reality that has played God knows how many roles, has worn how many masks over eternity. And so, whichever path we choose in life, it's equally important that we remember what the purpose is. So, 
When people get married, for example, Pooja Swamiji's blessing to them always is, may you walk together toward that ultimate goal of God-realization. Not, may you forget the ultimate goal and think that actually it's about how many toys you can buy for your children or whether your house can be bigger than the house of the people next door or squeezing each other to be exactly the way you want the other one to be or forgetting that in the other you are supposed to be seeing God not just an object that makes your object feel good for a few very brief moments. And so, so the relationship is not the problem. The romance is not the problem. The problem becomes when we think that that's all there is, that that is the point. Romance is drama, just like any other drama. And that doesn't mean it isn't fun. That doesn't mean that we are not a allowed to enjoy it. By all means, enjoy it. The, the Sanskrit term Leela means the divine play. That we're all here engaged in the Leela. Enjoy it. Whatever your role may be, enjoy it. Play it to the fullest and best of your ability. Whether it's a mother, a wife, a nun, whatever it may be. But the attachment. So the whole, the whole teaching, and this is why relationship is a yoga, why householder phase is considered an ashram of life, to learn how to do it without the attachment. And here's an interesting secret. Just because you are celibate or a renunciant, doesn't mean you are automatically freed of attachment. You still have to do the work. Simply, simply abstaining from sensual pleasures does not sadly automatically remove every obstacle on the spiritual path. It would be fantastic if it did. But you still have to do the work. You can be attached to so much, anything. In relationship, yeah, we're attached to relationship. We're attached to the physical people. We're attached to them behaving the way we want them to behave. But just because you're not having romance doesn't mean that you don't have attachments. That work of non-attachment is work for everybody. And so you all get to choose. Am I going to do that work in this ashram, in the ashram of a householder? Am I going to do it in the sannyas ashram, the renunciant? But the work is there in both places. In relationship, we mistake love for attachment. That somehow if I love you, it's inevitable I'm going to be attached. And it's not inevitable. Because the truth is, if I really deeply love you, not just the fun romance stage, not just the firecrackers, not just the passion, not just the physical ecstasy, but the real ecstasy. Not the one that very quickly goes like this. But the real ecstasy of love. 
then what I really love is your essence. What I really love is your soul, your spirit. It's not about your physical body. If it's about your physical body, it's the one that goes like this. It is that attachment. You're nice to me. I love you. You're not nice to me. What happened to you? I couldn't sleep. I can't eat. I hate you. It's not fair. Right? So that's not love. That's a contract basis relationship. You do what I want, then I love you. You don't do what I want. I'm angry, I yell, I scream, I don't, whatever it may be, however our particular bargaining may work. But love is of the spirit. Love is of the soul, love is of the essence. And so yeah, sometimes there's romance, sometimes there's drama, sometimes there's fireworks, and sometimes there isn't. Sometimes there's just stillness. Sometimes there's sickness. Sometimes there's challenges. Sometimes there's so much. But the love is that. That isn't only of the body or only of the behavior or only of the drama. It's of the essence. And when I really love the essence, then the attachment to what you say or do, it dissipates automatically. And that's how to turn relationship into yoga. That's how to walk together toward God. Is how can you use this relationship to get beyond the attachment to the physical body. To get beyond the attachment to, are you dancing according to my tune? Are you telling me what I want to hear? And to actually use it as an opportunity to connect soul to soul. Because when you do, that's, that's real love and that's spirituality. So you can certainly use it. But yeah, it's a challenge. It's a huge challenge. It's why the path of monasticism is always available. <laughs> but, but don't run from it. Monasticism is not something that we should ever choose or ever walk into because we are pushing away relationships. It's never about what I'm pushing away. It's always about what I'm embracing. So whenever people say to me, oh, should I, should I take sannyasa? I always say, not if you're doing it just to avoid the emotional or spiritual difficulties of relationship. Because then you're going to have them in your celibacy. It isn't the actual act of being in relationship with someone that's the problem. It's the mind that's the problem. It's the mind that has jealousy. It's the mind that has expectations. It's the mind that wants what it wants when it wants it. And that'll just come out in a different way. if before you're ready, you renounce. So while you're still, while you're walking that path of relationship, or if you know that's your dharma, to be in relationship, use it. Use it to connect with God. Within yourself, in your loved one. And in that case, use the physical expression of love as yet just another way of loving the divine creation. 
because your physical body is part of the divine creation. And so for householders in relationship, the, the human body in that form is yet just another way of celebrating the beauty of creation. In the same way that we celebrate a sunset or we celebrate a tree. It's all creation. You celebrate the sound of beautiful music. You celebrate the fragrance of a flower. There's no spiritual teaching that says, thou shalt not enjoy beautiful music. Thou shalt not smell the flowers and enjoy it. This is, this is the exquisiteness of creation. But just don't get attached to it. When the sunset is over, don't have the mind go, when's it coming back, when's it coming back, when's it coming back, when's it coming back, I need it, I need it, I need it. That's the problem. It was a beautiful expression of creation. And then you drop back in again to the truth of who you are, that divine space, that divine truth that's beyond all this, where the sunset is inside. The smell of the flower is inside. The beautiful music is inside. All of that ecstasy is inside. Which is why the enlightened beings are so happy just sitting in caves, not dreaming about shopping sprees in London or Paris or Dubai, not dreaming of rock concerts, not dreaming of eating this food, not dream because they've, it's all inside. All that Enjoyment, all that ecstasy, it's all inside. And that is what helps us ultimately get detached from needing it from the outside world. And you can do that in relationship. In fact, in, in the Indian tradition, it's said that even after your Householder life after your childbearing years, you're supposed to enter into what's called Van Prast Ashram and then ultimately Sannyas Ashram. So it doesn't mean get divorced or walk away from the spouse, it's an internal shift. That even though I may still be physically with you, it's no longer about this, it's now about going inside. And so that is, that is considered actually the, the dharmic transition, pathway, journey of even the path of relationship. 